Welcome to this month's version of our blog. In this month, we're going to look at tube and port milling in Solid Edge Cam Pro, and it's also in the NX Cam package that we sell. Tube and port milling. Solid Edge Cam Pro and NX Cam allow users to create tube machining operations to cut complex interior surfaces typically found in manifolds and cylindrical head ports. You do require a multi-axis license for this and it only works in NX 11.0.1 .1 or newer. Usability Notes with geometry, you have a reduced number of work pieces since faces can be locally added to cut area that aren't part faces. And there's an optional selection of a central curve. I recommend using the central curve, especially in complex ports, and this can be created with the spline command. For tools, you can use either a ball mill and or the spherical cutter tool. Some people call it the lollipop tool. For the tool axis, the tool orientation is done automatically. The user can limit the maximum tilt from the chosen axis of the most upper MCS in the geometry tree or view. The drive method, you specify the end of the tube to be cut and there's three automatic options to adjust machining depth. And I'll show you these in the demo. For clearance, there's options or parameters to control clearance for the complete tool. And you can see that here. And there's that tilt angle that I mentioned in the previous slide. And for patterns, we have the finish operation. You can either use a helix, a zig, or a zigzag with lift cut pattern. And then the rough operation, you can use follow periphery or the adaptive pattern. So let's have a look at this in NX Cam or Solid Edge Cam Pro. To demonstrate the tube and port milling, I'll use this part here. And I will only be showing the finish tube. The roughing is virtually identical. It just takes a little longer to generate for the sake of time, I'll show the finishing. We'll start by pointing out that we have set up our program group. We've created a spherical tool here, and we've created some geometry groups that show the part and the port or tube. We'll create an operation, and we're using the multi-axis operations here so you do need a license to mill and multi-axis and you do need 11.1 .1 or greater. We'll select the tube finish operation. I'm going to put this in program for the tool. We'll use the spherical tool. We're going to use the geometry group finish small port which is this one here and this will be a mill finish. You'll notice that the parts already selected along with the tube geometry. Our next step is to specify the central curve. And we use the spline to do that. Notice the arrow pointing down is what I want. I'm going to say OK. Next, we determine how do we want to machine this. You can I'm going to use both here. Now both indicates that I'm going to machine from both sides. You also have entry and exit. Entry would be this side here. Where do you want to machine to? The midpoint, maximum exit si entry side, maximum exit side, or you can specify. I'm going to use the midpoint here. I want a helical cut pattern, constant step over, Maximum distance, 10% of the tool, that's fine. Climb cut is good. I'm going to go to the axis and avoidance here. And here's where I can control my clearance. So I want maybe a two millimeter clearance from the tool holder, 0.5 from the tool shank, 
and 0.1 millimeter from the tool neck and a tilt clearance angle of 0.1. Under strategy, the maximum depth of cut I want is maybe two millimeters. And then I can say generate. Now this will take a few seconds to generate. The roughing tube takes probably about twice as long to generate as the finishing tube in, in this circumstance. So this is why I'm just showing you the finishing tube. And I'm using a old laptop that's got a processor that's about six years old. It's an i7 core processor. So if you're running this on a more powerful machine, obviously it'll be quicker. There's your resulting tool path. Let's just verify this so you can see it in action. And we'll just do the replay here. And we'll run this at 8 is fine. We'll hit play. And so you can observe the tool in action. And you'll see that it cuts down to the midpoint. And then it'll retract, arc over, and then cut from the other side to the midpoint. Now it swings over and starts cutting up the other side. Once it completes this, it'll retract out and wait for the next operation. Now a nice thing about this is that you can select part geometry that's not part of the part. But let me turn on my layers here. I'm going to turn on layer 13 and you'll notice I've created a surface that's matching the port surface here but it's extended out a little bit on both sides and if I go and look at my geometry group you'll notice what I've done is I've included that in the large port I've included this as the cut geometry so let's go back to our program view we'll create another operation this time we'll use the large port geometry which includes that surface we'll say OK and in this case we're virtually going to reproduce what we did in the first one remember you have to select your center curve we'll use those settings are the same we'll go to the midpoint again we'll use similar or identical clearance options here and we'll use a maximum cut step of two millimeters and we'll hit generate again and once again we'll wait for the generation to occur and observe the tool path And there's our tool path. So you can see quite nicely how quickly we we're able to generate these two tool paths. So we have this one here and this one back here. Now, if you need more information on this, 
you just go to the help section and we have a complete tube milling section there and you can see all the different information that's available to you here through our help documentation. And this completes this demo. If you would like to learn more about Solid Edge Cam Pro or NX Cam, you can contact us at 1-888-567-3933 or by email at info at designfusion.com. If you are already a Design Fusion customer using Solid Edge Cam Pro or NX Cam and require technical support, you can contact us at 1-877-215-1883 or email us at support at designfusion.com. Thank you for taking the time to view this month's blog. I hope it was interesting and informative.